Welcome to our lecture online. Now we've seen an overdamped case, a critically damped case, and an underdamped case in the particular type of problem where we're finding a step response of a series RCL circuit. So now let's try an example, a random example with a different circuit. And what we're trying to do is find an equation that tells us the voltage as a function of time, and of course, it'll be the voltage across capacitor. We essentially have two separate circuits. We have the circuit on the left, when the switch is to the left here, you can see that current is flowing through the circuit, but as soon as the capacitor fills up with, uh, with charge, no current will flow through the capacitor, and all the current will flow through the resistors. We can see that the voltage across the capacitor will equal the voltage across the 2-ohm resistor here. Then at t equals 0, the switch goes to the other side. Now we have a different circuit right here. This source is now driving the current through the circuit, and notice that the direction of the current, which is by definition or by convention, it goes from the positive side of the capacitor through the inductor. So the direction of current is like this, even though the voltage will be driving the current in the opposite direction, so we need to be careful there. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we have a bunch of things we should calculate first. For example, we should calculate the alpha, we should calculate the omega sub naught, we should calculate the current initial, we should calculate the voltage initial, we should calculate the steady state voltage, all those things we probably should try to find the values of first before we do anything else. All right, so let's find alpha. Alpha by definition is R over 2L. So in this case, that would be the resistance. Hmm, which resistance are we talking about? Well, once the switch goes over to the other side, we're dealing with the circuit right here, and that'll be the resistor in question. So it'll be 10 divided by 2 times the inductor, which is 2.5. And so that's equal to 2. So alpha equals a positive 2. What about omega sub now? Well, that's equal to 1 over the square root of L times C. In this case, that's 1 over the square root of L, which is 2.5. And C is equal to 1 40th. All right, so what's that equal to? Sometimes calculators can come in very handy. 2.5 divided by 40. Take the square root of that and the inverse of that, which is 4. Okay, so that's equal to 4. So notice that alpha is smaller than omega sub naught. So alpha is smaller than the natural frequency. So therefore, we can say that we're dealing with a underdamped case. which of course gives us the general equation for the voltage. How about I sub naught? Well, notice that there's current flowing through here. The moment we change the switch, we know there's no current going through the capacitor, and so at that moment, since now the circuit here is connected to the capacitor, there's no current going through the capacitor, no current going through this part of the circuit, so it starts out with zero current through the circuit. How about initial voltage? Well, notice we have a voltage divider here. The voltage across this capacitor will equal the voltage across here. So what we can say here is that the initial voltage across the capacitor is equal to the voltage of the source times the resistance over here divided by the total resistance. So essentially it's two-thirds the source resistance, so it's equal to two-thirds 18 volts. That's a three, by the way. There we go and so that's equal to 12 volts. So the initial voltage across the capacitor we start out with 12 volts. What about the steady state voltage? Well, once the switch goes to the other side, here's the circuit. The current will flow through the circuit until the capacitor is filled up with charge. Once it's filled up with charge, there's no current flowing through the circuit, no voltage drop across the inductor, no voltage drop across the capacitor, so all of the 15 volts will be dropped across the capacitor. Oh, did I say capacitor? I meant resistor. And all the 15 volts will be dropped across the capacitor. So we have a 15 volt uh, final steady state voltage across the capacitor. All right, now that we know all those values, we're ready to plug in the standard equation for an underdamped case. We can say that the voltage as a function of time is equal to A1 times the cosine of the damped oscillation frequency times time, 
plus A2 times the sine of omega sub D, again the damped frequency of the oscillation in the circuit, times T, times E to the minus alpha times T. All right, so it looks like we also need to find the omega sub D. Omega sub D is equal to the square root of the natural frequency squared minus alpha squared. And so in this case, that will be equal to the square root of omega sub naught, which is 4, so that would be 16 minus 2 squared, which is 4, so essentially the square root of 12, which is 3.464. All right, now we have everything we need to kind of start with our equation. We will not yet know the values for A1 and A2. That comes later, but we can say that the voltage as a function of time is equal to A1 times the cosine of omega sub D, which is 3.464T plus A2 times the sine of 4, oop, not 4, but 3, 3.464T all of it multiplied times z to the minus alpha, which we now know is 2, so minus 2t. So now we have to find a1 and a2. And we can start out by finding the boundary condition when time is equal to 0 for the voltage. We know that the initial voltage is equal to 12. So we can say that v, when t is equal to 0, is equal to 12, which is equal to, now setting this equation, when t equals 0. When t equals 0, this goes to 0, this goes to 1, and this goes to 1 as well. So we have a1. Oh, we're forgetting something. What did I forget? The steady state voltage. Can't do that. So plus voltage steady state plus voltage steady state, because indeed there will be a steady state voltage of 15 volts. Can't forget about that. So that is added to the voltage equation. So now we have the transient voltage and the steady state voltage. So when we take, uh, when we plug in the value for A1, and here, of course, instead of writing VSS, I can simply write 15 volts. It's better. So going back to setting this equal to 0, this goes to 0, this goes to 1, so we end up with A1 times 1 plus 15, which means that A1 is equal to 12 minus 15, which is equal to minus 3. So now we have the value for A1. So how do we find the value for A2? To do that, we need to take the derivative of this equation because we're going to use the equation that the current is equal to the capacitance times dV dt, which then implies that the dV dt, when time is equal to 0, is equal to the initial current divided by the capacitance. And the initial current is equal to zero. So in this case, that will be equal to zero, which means that we can take the derivative of this function, oh, this function, and set it equal to zero, and then solve for A2. So let's do that. So dV dt, and I need lots of room, so I'm going over here, dV dt is equal to, we have a product here, the first times the second, so we have the first, which is, a1. Now, A1 is a negative 3. So, negative 3 times the cosine of 3.464t plus A2, which is the unknown we're looking for, times the sine of 3, oop, not 4, but 3.464t. So, it's the first times the derivative of the second, which will be a minus 2 times e to the minus 2t, plus the second, e to the minus 2t, times the derivative of the first. So the derivative of this, the cosine gives me a negative sign, so we get a1, which is minus 3, times this, times a negative, makes that a positive. Whoa. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this times the angle, and this of course is negative 3, and multiply the times at 3.464, but since we take the derivative of cosine, it gives us a negative sign, I have another negative. So 3 times 3.464 equals 10.932. So 10.932 positive times the cosine of 3.464 t. And derivative of the sine is the positive cosine. 
So we have A2 times this value right here. And so it gives me plus 3.464A2 times the cosine of 3.464T, like this. Okay, so now I think we're good. So we have the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Now we're going to take, we're going to set this, uh, the boundary condition where the time goes to zero, and we know that that's equal to zero here. So dv dt, when time is equal to zero, is equal to zero, which is equal to this when time is equal to zero. So when time is equal to zero, this goes to one, this goes to one, the, ooh, did I make a mistake here? I have cosine and cosine, something is wrong here. No, ooh, this should be sine, because the derivative of cosine is the sine. I'm sure that some of you have already caught that in probably you're writing a note saying you made a mistake, but there it is, I caught my mistake, but I shouldn't have made it in the first place. You're absolutely correct. So we know that the sine portions will go to zero, that the cosine will go to 1, and so we have minus 3 times 1, times a negative 2, that gives me a positive 6. This goes to 0, this goes to 0, and then we have plus 3.464 times a2. All right, so from that, we can say that a2 is equal to minus 6 divided by 3.464, which is 6 divided by 3.464, which is 1.732, and it's a negative, minus 1.732. Well, that looks like the square root of 3. All right, so now we have a1 and a2. We have alpha, and we have the steady state voltage. We're now ready to write down the final answer for the voltage as a function of time. So the voltage as a function of time is equal to A1, which is a minus 3, minus 3 times a cosine of 3.464T, plus A2, now A2 is a negative, negative 1.732 times the sine of 3.464t, and the whole thing multiplied times e to the minus 2t. And don't forget, we still have a steady state voltage of plus 15, and that gives us the transient voltage, which eventually goes to zero, and the steady state voltage. And that is how that's done. Now let me check to see if it's right. Well, that's what I got here. It's probably correct.